All right, hey guys and gals and all my Buster buddies. This is Brad Claybaugh, your host of Brad's Boredom Busters. Welcome back to the channel. This video will be a two-parter. Today's video will be showing you how to make a rope bowl using the variegated thread for color. So the materials that you'll need for this project is your 732nd cotton clothesline cording, variegated thread of your color choice, and then we will use denim needles for our sewing machine. I will show you also how to do a scalloped top edge to finish it off. So let's go over to the sewing machine and let's get started. An optional piece of equipment that may help you with this project because you need to stitch the bowl out onto a flat surface is a sewing machine extension table. If your machine comes with one, this is a good time to use it. I will not be using mine because my machine is recessed into my sewing table. And so if I took it out, put the plug in to the table and then put the machine on top of it, it raises it up at an awkward height for this project. So I will not be using my extension table. And if you don't have an extension table for your sewing machine, then you can do as I need to do. You can see that my machine is not exactly flush to the surface. And you need it to be flush to the surface to make the bowls. So I found a book that is just the right height to level it out. And you can find whatever it takes to make your sewing surface large enough, but flat, so you can make the bowls. All right, so our last video, we had to use a quarter inch seam allowance, so we had our quarter inch foot on. This project, we're going to be doing zigzag, so we need to change it to our standard foot. Okay, now that we have our standard foot on for zigzag, now let's set the machine up for the proper stitches for the rope bowl. Alright, so we want to set up our stitch for the rope bowl, which will be a zigzag. And we want to have the settings for the width. Um, almost as wide as your machine will go. You want the stitches to go from the center of one row of cord across to the center of the other row of cording. That way it holds it together the best and also gives you a little latitude for wandering and then you also achieve your best color that way. Now for the stitch length, that's kind of up to you. The shorter your stitch length, the denser the color will be, but also more thread you're going to consume. I think I will shorten my length a little bit. Let's try that and see if we like it. All right, so let's load the thread into the machine. This will be the variegated thread that I'm using on this project today. The other thing you'll need to do as you load the thread into your machine is prepare your bobbin threads because on the rope bowl, your bobbin thread is actually the outside thread of the bowl. Your top thread is the inner thread of the bowl. And so it's good to load multiple bobbins, have them prepared because you are going to use up a lot of thread. All right, now that you got the bobbins all loaded up, get your bobbin in your machine according to your personal machine's instructions. And then before we go any further, you need to also change out the needle in the machine, put in a fresh needle, 
it's good to start with a fresh needle on most all your projects. They do wear out and it gives you a nicer result with a fresh needle. At this time we will load in a denim needle. All right, so a fresh needle. Just a little information if you're new at sewing. Your needle will have a flat side and a round side. I believe on most all sewing machines, the flat side is put in away from you. So the flat side is toward the back of the machine. Put it in as far as it can go and get that tightened down nicely. Use the supplied wrench that comes with your machine. All right, so now your needle's in. Now we can thread that. Hey, Buster Buddies. Let me show you another trick on how to make the project go easier for you. As you unspool your 100 feet of clothesline cording, put it into a bucket, and that way it keeps it contained, and you can spool it out without it knotting up so uh, readily. Yeah, it's a good idea. Just have that right down on the floor next to your sewing machine as you start winding the bowl up at, through the sewing machine. Then this really helps keep everything under control. All right, so when you start, you'll find that some manufacturers actually put some tape on the end of the cord, which is a good thing. Leave that on. It keeps it from unraveling while you're starting to work with it. If it doesn't, then take some clear scotch tape, wrap that around the end, cut it then in the middle of the tape so you have about a quarter inch or so that is still taped up and that will help keep it under control as you start to wind it. So your first step is just taking the end of the cord rolling it up into a small little sphere. Go around oh, about four or so revolutions. You have to stitch up this part to start the base. Let's go one more. All right, that's good like that. Then you take and just run a needle through, I mean, a pin through it to hold that together while you stitch it. Oh, and while I'm getting this pinned together here, the uh, one of the reasons that you use the denim needles for this project is because the cording is rather dense and those needles are a little stronger and so it penetrates better, less chance of breaking a needle doing the project. Let's put one. Another one on the other side. Okay, so that holds that together until we get it stitched up. Okay, so now you've got it pinned together so you can get started stitching it. This holds it in place. I've seen two different ways of starting the base of the bowl. One way I've seen is starting after you make this small spiral doing a zigzag stitch starting at the top straight down to the bottom and then from side to side and you end up with a cross right in the middle on the bottom of the bowl it's efficient it holds it together i don't necessarily like that look what i like to do is start a stitch here at the top 
and just come down and then turn and keep coming around until you get out to this point. And then that's when you can kind of let the, take the pins out and start spiraling it. So that's what we'll do today. I'll show you the way I like to start them. The other thing when you're starting to stitch and a good way to keep centered um, is on my machine, my standard foot has a little notch right here in the center. I line that up with the uh, gap between the two cords that keeps the stitches even on either side. Okay, when you finish your first short row right in the center, all right, lift your presser foot, cut your threads, because that center row is kind of independent. Then you come back up here to the top and comes down this side and just start slowly spiraling around. It A lot of it, especially on the curves, you may have to turn the manual wheel on the side of your sewing machine and not use your foot pedal. Uh, you want to go very slow. You can't go too fast at this point. So back up to the top and make sure that the cord is always rotating around your spiral clockwise. In the beginning here, if you have a needle down function, that's very helpful. So you can Pivot around these tight turns. All right, so once you get around your initial spiral that you have pinned, you can Cut the thread there. Remove that so you can get your pins out. And then clean up any of your loose threads at this point. Okay, so now we can start working the spiral tighter and tighter. And as I said, make sure you line up the center of your foot to the center of the groove between the two cords to give you the most even stitch. All right, so now I am just going to start stitching and spiraling this out to the size of the base that I want. And so enjoy the music. All right, so this is a good time to talk about what happens when you run off your path, as I just did. Well, it's nice with this variegated thread because you're really not going to see where you messed up. So just release your presser foot. And in most cases, depending on how far back it is, you wouldn't even have to cut your thread, but I think in this case I will. Back up to the point where you came off your track. And then find a Good place to transition back in. Put your foot back down. And maybe back stitch a couple stitches just to help tie it in. And then keep going.
Now you could actually stop at this point and you'd have a really nice coaster. Um, I've seen projects where they've made them just flat and large like this, large enough to make them placemats. Um, but today we are making bowls. So we keep going. Okay, ran out of bobbin. Time to change the bobbin. All right, we got a fresh bobbin made up. So just as before, when you run off your track, when you have to insert a new bobbin thread and re-thread your top thread, then run a couple stitches forward and then also reverse thread. All right, now you're locked in and now you can just keep going at your comfortable speed. Back to our musical interlude. Okay, let's see how big we are. I say you can make this bowl any size you like. I think we're going to probably start turning it. I'm at nine inches across. And that's a good size right now. So what's easiest to do at this point, because now is when we start turning upward, is to put a pin on where you're going to start turning at as a marker so you know where your stitches are starting and where you should stop. So at this point, we are just going to lift, put our hand underneath Put your hand underneath just to raise it a little bit and then go about three or four times around back to your pin and then after that then you raise it a little higher and go three or four more times around and then you'd raise it probably a third time, go around again. And then by then you should just about be vertical, which will make the sides of the bowl. So let's keep going. All right, that's three times around. So now just raise up your base of the bowl a little higher. Go three more times. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm holding it just in the back like this. It's almost vertical. You say around the last three times. And then what you'll do is just hold it against your machine and then make it as tall as you like. All right, now that you've made it around for the final time, now just kind of force the base of the bowl all the way up against your sewing machine, and then just go around as many times as you want to make the bowl as tall as you want.
All right, now when you get the bowl to the size that you want, and in this case, I, if you remember, I stopped at nine inches flat and then started rolling it up. Well, now we are 13 inches across. So remember the bowl is going to grow wider at the top than it is at the base when you started rolling it. So keep that in mind, maybe calculate that in. If you want a bowl that's only 10 inches across, then maybe start turning it at seven inches. So I said I was going to show you how to do a scalloped edge. So now we're going to start marking off for the edge. So for this bowl, I'm marking three inches and then two inches. The cord will loop at about three and a half to four inches and then get stitched down those two inches. So I'll finish marking off around the top edge of the bowl and then we'll start creating the scallops. And all I'm using to mark it with is a air and water dissolvable marker. That way, when you're finished, the marks will disappear. All right, so after that's marked off, now we can put it back in the sewing machine and create our scallops. As I showed in the sample bowl at the beginning of the video, that one, I only went around the bowl once, so it was one layer of cording. I think today I will do two layers. That way we can also add color to the scallops, the same as the bowl. And then mark your edges for however big you want the scallops. And to create the scallop, I measured on the cord three and a half inches and then that'll get pinned in that location and then stitched at the two. So line up the marks that you've made on the edge of your bowl and then just pin that down and then go over to your next two marks that line up, pin those together. Do a short forward stitch, then back stitch that, and then continue forward to your next pin. Stop just short of it, and then back stitch. And then cut your thread. Okay. And then just keep moving around the bowl in the same method and then line up your next two marks to pin that All right, this is going to be the last loop. So measure it out. Measure the size of your loop.
Okay, so we're back to the beginning now. And so now is the time you just cut your cord, cut it at an angle. Taper it into the bowl, so like that. There we go. And you can use your little stick to hold that edge in. And then back stitch so your needle runs over the top of your final cord and that will help pull it into it and cut that all right there we go that's a nice finish then just trim your excess threads off. And there's our finished bowl with our scalloped edges. Hope you enjoyed this project. All right, interesting thing about these rope bowls, the 732nd cording makes a little bit stiffer bowl if you're making a small bowl that has taller sides, then that's going to hold its shape a little bit better. The quarter inch cording is uh, not quite as structural, but it's good for a wide, flatter bowl. All right, I hope you really enjoyed that project. Now don't forget, come back and see our second video in the series. Next time we'll be making a rope bowl out of quarter inch cotton cording, but our next one will be instead of variegated thread for color, we're going to be doing something different. We're going to be dyeing our cotton cording. I'll be showing you how to ice dye on our cotton cording so we can make a very colorful bowl. So come back and see that video. Hey Busters, don't forget if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends, please subscribe. That really helps me out. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos.